A quick recap. In Amsterdam this week, racist, genocidal, Israeli football hooligans, supporters of Maccabee Tel Aviv, went on the rampage. They attacked a Moroccan cab driver. They interrupted a minute's silence for Spanish flood victims with fireworks and jeers. They sang songs such as Kill All Arabs. They sang songs literally celebrating the slaughter of Palestinian children. They tore down Palestinian flags from people's homes. They threw things at people's homes. They were filmed with iron bars masked up. And crucially, they violently attacked people in the streets. Footage was taken by a Dutch photographer which showed Maccabee hooligans attacking a Dutch resident. Western media organisations then used this footage to suggest it was Maccabee fans being attacked. This context was deliberately and deceitfully stripped away by Western media outlets and politicians who claimed this was a pogrom against Jewish people on the streets of Amsterdam. Now, Sky News, having been pushing comparisons with Kristallnacht on air, they actually did their job. They posted a video which accurately gave context. And you know what they then did? They deleted it. Originally offering no explanation whatsoever, they then posted another video they called a re-edit, which wasn't a re-edit at all, we'll come on to that, accompanied with a tweet reading, editors know this is a re-edit of a previous video which didn't meet Sky News' standards for balance and impartiality. Not a re-edit, it was a completely different video. Then they deleted that and then uploaded a third version. Now, the brilliant academic and near namesake of mine, Mark Owen Jones, an expert in disinformation, has done a detailed analysis of what Sky News did. Let me go through his thread. He says, this is nuts. After mysteriously deleting a package covering the Amsterdam protests, Sky News have put up a new version. The new version completely changes the thrust to emphasize that the violence was anti-Semitic. See the opening screenshot change below. The image of the video changes from Israeli football fans attacked in Amsterdam, what we know, to what we know about anti-Semitic violence in Amsterdam. He then notes how the language was changed. In the first tweet accompanying the video, it says Maccabee Tel Aviv fans tore down Palestinian flags and chanted racist Arab slogans. The Israeli team supporters were attacked and fights took place in the streets. That's accurate. That was then changed completely to violence in Amsterdam, what we know so far. Police in Amsterdam arrested 62 people following violence in the city on Thursday night. The city's mayor, police force, UK Foreign Secretary David Lamy and others condemned anti-Semitic violence. It then inserts into the video footage of the Dutch Prime Minister condemning anti-Semitism. Marco and Jones notes they added an impact narrative and vox pops, but only from a Maccabee fan, not a resident of Amsterdam. No one who was on the receiving end of violence for Maccabee hooligans. Marco and Jones then notes the original report ends with the reporting saying that while politicians called it a pogrom, their statements failed to mention the assaults by Israeli hooligans against Dutch citizens. He notes this was deleted. Now, similarly, Sky News also edited their online article. As David Clark, former special advisor to the late Labour Foreign Secretary Robin Cook notes, the chanting of Maccabee fans is no longer referred to as racist. Now, as David Clark says, Sky News changed that to more neutral terms as anti-Arab. It's not just racism, it's genocidal racism. What is more racist than calling for the extermination of an entire people based on their ethnic group? There's literally nothing more racist than that. David Clark then adds, second, footage that in the film was described as showing Maccabee fans attacking locals is not referred to in the story at all. Instead, there was a still photograph, but no description of what it depicts. This is lying by omission. He then goes on, third, the timeline of events, which is described clearly in the film, is now blurred. So the first examples of violence against Maccabee fans could be taken by the reader to predate the incident in which a Palestinian flag was torn down. So they've turned the timeline upside down to again make it look like the Maccabee fans, hooligans, were the victims. As David Clark concludes, news organisations sometimes get things wrong and should be willing to change content accordingly, but they should do so transparently. This looks like a news organisation manipulating the truth as a result of private pressure. Sky News needs to explain themselves, he says. Well, they haven't explained themselves. They just added to the bottom of the article, editors note the video in this piece is a re-edit of a previous version which didn't meet Sky News' standards for balance and impartiality. Why? What did it violate? Which, which standards? They need to set that out. What standards for balance and impartiality did they violate? Now, look, we have heard for a long time mainstream media outlets passionately denouncing disinformation on social media. But what we see here is mainstream media outlets spreading disinformation. Then we have to rely on social media to find out what has really happened. For example, on social media, a Dutch photographer who captured on film Maccabee fans attacking Dutch residents is now demanding apologies 
from multiple media organisations, from the BBC to CNN, for falsely portraying her footage as though it was Maccabee fans being attacked. Now, this photographer has so far, she says, received an apology from just one German media outlet, Tagesschau. She said, I would, to, to all the media organisations, said, I would like you to do the same an apology, a removal of my footage and the truth. A few minutes of your precious time. Write down, Maccabee supporters attacked Amsterdam residents in front of Central Station after the game. Meanwhile, when the supposedly traumatised Israeli football hooligans returned to Tel Aviv, they celebrated by singing, IDF will fuck the Arabs. Why school out in Gaza? There are no children there. As Israeli leftists on social media pointed out, they're referring in the first part to the rape of Palestinians. There are now re repeat that multiple examples we know corroborated of Palestinian detainees raped, gang raped. And, and the second part of what they say there is celebrating the mass slaughter of Palestinian children in the week when a UN report on Gaza found that close to 70% of the verified deaths in Gaza are women and children. They said the age most represented among the dead were five to nine year olds. What do you even say? Imagine Palestinian or Arab football fans had just done one of the things here you know what would happen. They would all have been violently arrested within moments and they would be passionately denounced by media outlets and Western politicians around the world and denounced as genocidal extremists. Imagine the media portrayal. What we're witnessing here is the attempt to manufacture consent in real time. What Sky News have done is inadvertently expose the process to which we are lied to by media outlets. The fact that Israel is committing a genocide and its football fans, unlike Russian fans after the invasion of Ukraine, are allowed to take part in tournaments and literally rampage around European streets violently celebrating that genocide is, is insane. We can't let them get away with it. These media organisations are exposing themselves as propagandists and liars. And people can see that contrast. And that will have consequences. And we need that, those consequences to be channeled in a productive direction. To overturn this status quo. To build a different sort of world and a different sort of society.